what's up i like scary we are back i hope you guys are having an awesome day i'm having an awesome day it feels great to be a horror fan so you guys today we're going to talk about what we think will happen in scream 7 kind of picking up from what we seen in scream 6 but before we get started definitely smash the like button because it definitely helps so you all um you know we just got amazing scream um film scream 6 which is globally at like 67 million in the box office, which is phenomenal. Um, it is definitely, in my opinion, like I said, one of the best screams out there. And I feel this will lead up to Scream 7. You know, we will definitely begin to Scream 7, um, especially after these crazy numbers. But um, to dive into it, something that was interesting to me is little things I want to point out that can possibly be coming into scream seven you know or maybe it'll just you know stay dead in scream six number one i want to talk about basically like just dermont you know his character and the curses or the baileys whatever you want to call them and just their background to be honest because you know this is very crazy how they kind of connected them to richie and everything and they're like brother and sister um ethan and quinn and then dermont but one thing that stuck out to me was that dermont actually is married but we, we don't get too much talk about, you know, Dermont and his wife. We just see this, you know, this gold band on his ring finger. So I'm trying to tell you guys something that is definitely, you know, reality. So if they crash out and, you know, are taking out people in honor of their son and their brother, Richie, right? And, you know, this is the woman that birthed him. I'm just, you know, I'm just talking though, guys. This is the one that birthed them, and she's not in a picture. She's probably, you know, not aware of this, or she's aware of it, but she's just not, you know, being captured in this moment right now, as of now. It's just real interesting to see the whole family of the Kirsches or the Baileys, whatever you want to call them, just, you know, taking things out on the core four, especially Sam and everything, but we don't get the mother, you know, we don't get that Mrs. Loomis presence in there, you know, um, that's very interesting to know that he's attached to another person, Dermont, and we don't get any detail about it, but it can definitely, I think, um, be touched on in Scream 7, uh, possibly, because they definitely brung Richie into Scream 6, which I was not expecting, but something else I want to kind of touch on that could be in Scream 7 is the fact that, okay, Sam went through all of this, you know, she she killed Dermont and obtained her dad's mask and we get that shot of her with the mask and the um jacket, but we're thinking that she's going to keep it. I'm thinking that, you know, that Sam's going to keep this mask just off the fact of everything she's went through, you know, it's her dad. Why not? Just keep it. But she ends up dropping the mask in the middle of the street. We get that crazy shot of the mask in the street. Now, her and Tara walk off. I think what would be crazy, you all, if the movie kind of continues off of that spot or does like a flashback in Scream 7, showing someone picking up that mask, who, I don't know, I think I don't think they should tell us. Maybe we just see like the bottom half of her body, pick it up, they have on gloves. You know, maybe we even see something very interesting like a cop, another cop picks it up. Maybe they're wearing cahoots with Dermot, Dermot just didn't bring them up. Or a paramedic or something picked it up, who knows? Either way, I think that would have also been cool if they would have, you know, put that in the end, um, put that in the end, you know, um, on last night's stream, we kind of talked about that, you know, if they would have put that in the end and just left us out with that, that cliffhanger, that would have been crazy. But something else I kind of want to touch on is that Sydney possibly will come back for Scream 7. But now that this, you know, this film has exceeded expectation in box office numbers and, you know, sales, it's kind of showing that they don't need Sydney Prescott, but I I want to say that they definitely respect Sydney enough to kind of give her her flowers and her send off the right way. Um, I don't think that was enough personally. What Gail said, you know, she's going away with the kids and she wants to be safe, and you know, um, she just wants to deal with it and stuff. But I really do think that she's going to come back, and we kind of leave off on a note where Gail's actually in the hospital, and last thing we heard her say was tell Sydney. That he didn't get me, but he actually did get, you know, Gail. So that was kind of confusing right there. But I feel like, okay, if they're running this trilogy on us, even though, you know, Radio Silence said they can make, you know, screen moves for the rest of their life, they're enjoying it that much. But I'm thinking they're going to probably run a trilogy on us. It, you have to get Sydney back and kind of have the ghost face that comes after her, you know, has some type of connection with the past. We, you, okay, we let you guys give us Richie and everything, but. 
you know, we are definitely here for the characters that we appreciate so much and we're invested in. So I really do think that when, you know, Sydney comes back, it has to be a killer that has like a past with her or is connected and, you know, even also connected to Courtney Cox. And then it can kind of incorporate Sam's character along with Sydney. You know, you got the future final girl with the OG final girl, which is Sydney Prescott. Either way, the way this left off in Scream 6, I feel like this is just enough to get Sydney back and just come back, especially after hearing Courtney Cox has damn near been killed. She's damn near dead, you know, but she pulled through, but she was flat on that floor, you know what I'm saying? So that is going to be very interesting to see what type of route they take with Scream 7. You know, who oh shit, who knows? Maybe uh, Nev, after all this, she just decides to pull a Courtney Cox and, do, you know, do a book. And you know what happened, you know, in Scream 4 and everything. And, and also just this this whole franchise, you know, with Gail, her books was kind of the key line in a lot of plots. So if Sydney writes a book, you know, another book, it can kind of play like that. But we've, we've seen that before. It all depends. I feel like with Scream 7, the motive has to be stronger. The killer has to be revealed in a way where we're super shocked. And, um, yeah, I really do think this can be something. Also, something I want to touch on and play with is that Sam slowly just moving closer and closer to becoming a ghost face. Like, she's getting more comfortable with it. You know, she talked to Henry Zerny, Sam, basically, that it felt right when she killed. And when Tara gave her, you know, the nod, like, hey, go ahead. I don't care. I don't mind. Take out Dermot. She's like, you messed with my family. You know, she finishes them off. And she does it in a costume. Like, it's one thing that, you know, just pull out the knife and stab. She made it a point to get the ghost face mask, get the costume, which I knew it was going to happen. But it was like, it's like she wanted to complete the feeling, you know, with her dad captured and stuff like that. She's looking at the mask, and it's like the mask was calling to her at the end. I mean, what if we get something in Scream 7 where literally Sam was on her last leg with this darkness, and maybe Tara or Sydney, someone has to save her from this darkness or something because maybe it gets bad to the point she's almost becoming super bipolar like maybe she has to do this sometimes or maybe her medicine got jacked up or, or something maybe that can be something playing a scream seven maybe someone knows that's you know close to sam this is eating at her so they kind of mess around her medicine and make it worse and we kind of find out you know maybe that can be a play of it where we get half ghost face which is like you know, with Sam and then have Final Girl, like, she's, like, kind of on both ends, but they got to kind of convert her back to just full Final Girl, you know? You know what I'm saying? It's, like, different levels, like, half and half. That's what we kind of, you know, seen in Scream 6. I definitely could think something could surround around Sam and maybe Sydney comes into play or, or you know, or <laughs> what if Sam just completely crashes out and then we got to have, you know, Sam versus, you know, Sydney. And maybe Tara's not going to, like, you know, go full-blown and let Sydney take out her sister. Or maybe she's like, you know what, you have to go. You know, you're technically a ghost face. You know, stuff like that. I think it has to be just very different, but it has to connect. Like, you know, with Scream 6, they did the story well. The third act was kind of a weak reveal, in my opinion. But I think 7, it, it should tighten up, go back to Legacy, and just a crazy plot and story. But... Yeah, you guys, after everything we talked about, which one is your favorite thing I talked about and what could possibly play on Scream 7? Or this is the end of the video. Don't forget to hit me on my social media, Alex Scream on Instagram, Alex Scream 77 on TikTok, right on Facebook, Alex Scream on Twitter, and right there where it says subscribe next to a click join to become a member of the channel. And yeah, you all, also check out the Patreon to get exclusive content and benefits. We're going to be doing some cool stuff over there soon. And yeah, you guys, I want you all to watch some horror movies. Stay scary out there. I love you all. Peace.